Welcome back. I'm talking with Nick Collistrom about the Falklands conflict. And we mentioned before the break the, is it Diane Gould? Diana, Diana Gould. Diana Gould interview. Uh, now, she was on a program called Nationwide, which was being hosted by Sue Lawley, I think. Sue Lawley, Nick, yeah. yeah. Sue yeah. Lawley and, and Margaret Thatcher, the Prime Minister at the time, was there being questioned about the sinking of the Belgrano. And as Nick said, you're saying that almost everything Thatcher says in this clip is, is not true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And almost everything, or everything Diana Gould says is true. Totally, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, well, yeah. let's just take a look at this clip. Store studio. Mrs Gould, your question, please. Uh, Mrs Thatcher, why, when the uh, Belgrano, the Argentinian mm. battleship, was outside the exclusion zone and actually sailing away from the Falklands, uh, why did you give the orders to sink it? But it was not sailing away from the Falklands. It was in an area which was a danger to our ships and to our people on them. Outside the exclusion zone. Then. Uh, but it was in an area which we had warned. At the end of April, we had given warnings that all ships in those areas, if they represented a danger to our ships, were vulnerable. When it was sunk, that ship which we had found was a danger to our ships. My duty was to look after our troops, our ships, our navy. And my goodness me, I live with many, many anxious days uh, and but nights. Mrs. Mrs. Thatcher, you started your answer by saying it was not sailing away from the Falklands. It was on a bearing of 280 and it was already west of the Falklands. So I'm sorry, but I cannot see how you can say it was not sailing when away from the Falklands. Was, when it was sunk. When it was sunk. It was a danger to our no, ships. No, but you have just said at the beginning of your answer that it was not sailing away from the Falklands. And I am asking you to correct yes, that statement. but it's within an area outside the exclusion zone, which I think what you are saying is sailing away. I think no, that's which I am not, about Mrs. Which way it was yes. facing was at the time. I Danger am, to our ships. Mrs. Thatcher, I am saying that it was on a bearing 280, which is a bearing just north of west. It was already west of the Falklands, and therefore nobody with any imagination can put it sailing other than away from the Falklands. Mrs. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Mrs. Gould. Mrs. Gould. Um, when you know, the orders were given to sink it, and when it was sunk, it was in an area which was a danger yes. to mm. our ships. Well, now, you accept mm. that, do you? Uh, no, well, I don't. I'm sorry it was, and you, um, must, you must accept uh, no, that Mrs. when Thatcher. we gave the order, when we changed the, ex the, the rules which enabled them to sink Belgrano, the change of rules had been notified at the end of April. It was all published that any ships that were a danger to ours within a certain zone, wider than the Falklands, were likely to be sunk. And again, I do say to you, my duty, and I'm very proud that we put it this way and adhered to it, was to protect the lives of the people in our ships and the enormous numbers of troops that we had down there waiting for landings. I put that duty first. Mrs. And when but, the Belgrano uh, was Miss sunk, when the Belgrano was sunk, and I ask you to accept this, she was in a position which was a danger to our Navy. Mrs. But Gould, let, Mrs. let me ask you this, Mrs. Gould. What, what motive are you seeking to attach to Mrs. Thatcher and her government in this? Is it inefficiency, lack of communication, or well, is it a desire for action, a desire for It war? is a desire for action and a lack of communications because on giving those orders to sink the Belgrano when it was actually sailing away from our fleet and away from the Falklands was to, in effect sabotaging any possibility of any peace plan succeeding and Mrs. Thatcher had 14 hours in which to consider the Peruvian peace plan that was being put forward to her, in which those 14 hours, those orders could have been rescinded. Right, Mrs. Thatcher. One day, all of the facts in about 30 years' time will be published. That I lifted is the not good enough, Mrs. Thatcher. I am we just... Mrs. Gould, would let, you let please Mrs. Thatcher answer. Let me I think answer. You've, you've put a fair point. Would you please let me answer? I lived with the responsibility for a very long time. I answered the question giving the facts, not anyone's opinions, but the facts. Those Peruvian peace proposals, which were only in outline, did not reach London until after the attack on the Belgrano. That is fact. 
Uh, I'm sorry, that is fact, and I am going to finish. Did not reach London until after the attack on the Belgrano. Moreover, we went on negotiating for another fortnight after that attack. I think it could only be in Britain that a prime minister was accused of sinking an enemy ship that was a danger to our navy when my main motive was to protect the boys in our navy. That was my main motive, um, and I'm very proud of it. Mrs. Gould, have One you... day, all the facts will be revealed, and they will indicate, as I have said. Mrs. Gould, have you got a new point to make? Otherwise, well, I must move just on. Just one point. Um, I understood that the Peruvian peace plans on a na uh, nationwide program were uh, discussed on the midnight May the 1st. If the, uh, that outline did not reach London, for an, well, another Mrs. 14 Thatcher hours, mm -hmm. um, I think there must be something very seriously wrong with our communications, and we are living in a nuclear age when we're going to have minutes to make decisions, not uh, hours. All right then, Nick. Yeah. And, and, and Sue Lawley lost her job. And notice the very balanced, even-handed approach of Sue Lawley yeah. in that interview. That was something that, that we gets were her fired. That we were discussing off camera. Nick was saying that um, in no television uh, political debate programme these days would. Uh, uh, somebody be allowed to attack a prime minister or a politician as easily as, as Gould did. So, in yeah. other words, the host would normally step in and protect the politician. Yeah. But, we, yeah. but Sue Lawley was, I think Sue Lawley was trying to find out, for her own knowledge, totally, yeah. what, what, totally what, right. what the nub right. of the question or yeah. the issue was. Yeah. So for me, she, was, she was actually did a good job there, yeah, allowing totally, Thatcher yeah. to, be, totally, yeah. to be questioned. Yeah, right. and, and one point, I think where this is one of the few times where Thatcher really was on the defensive. Not, normally she's quite an aggressive, not aggressive, but a, a very assertive speaker yeah. in control. She wasn't in control in that interview. She was, she was on the rails, basically. Well, she the, had a usual hi hypnotic manner. You do believe this, don't you? You must believe this. Yeah. Of course you believe <laughs> yeah. this. And yeah. Diana just didn't go for it. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think where Thatcher went wrong there, she should have just admitted she was wrong. She should have just said, yes, I, I correct myself. It was sailing away right. fr from the from the Falklands, but right. you don't think she was allowed to do that, Nick? Well, well uh, the, the whole story of what the Belgrade was doing got wrapped up by a devious defence minister, Michael Heseltine, as being top national security, and it can be called the crown jewels because Clive Ponting was was commissioned by Heseltine to look into it, and he then shipped a whole lot of stuff to Tam Daniel because he thought this is so important, this cover up, and. Uh, he then got arrested for it, and if you remember, the jury let him off. He was acquitted. Uh, Who got arrested? Uh, Clive Ponting got arrested right. because he, he told Tam Daniel about all this stuff. I see. And, and it was a, so it was a, the usual, it's a matter of national security, so we can't give anyone any, yeah. any information. Yeah. In other words, we can't let anyone see our lies. Yeah, yeah. and, and the jury acquitted Clive Ponting, and that was a major part of the inquiry we held uh, back in 1985, of getting the real story out. Of, okay, of so just tell us about that then, Nick. You held an inquiry with some very... Yes, yeah, so at Hampson uh, Town Hall, the Belgrano inquiry, we had a whole lot of people, uh, Tam Daniel, Clive Ponting, Ian, Ian Mercado. So this is, what, three years after the yeah, conflict? Yeah, okay. and Paul Rogers, the professor of peace studies at, at Bradford University, uh, th these kind of people, and we invited both sides, the government didn't want to send, send anybody, uh, and uh, our book was uh, published uh, fr from that. And I think we, we got the story. I mean, the thing is that we didn't have support from Peru or Argentina of giving their vital documents. That, that was, that was the, 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 the trouble. There, there's a whole lot of details of exactly when, who phoned who when, and mm -hmm. who agreed to what, th that they were pressured into not... P Peru was put under pressure not to come out with details of exactly... By who? Well, by British sources, obviously. Uh, Britain didn't want them to come out with this story. Right. Uh, so you were trying to find out the exact sequence of events in this peace negotiation and when that got back to London, and yeah. did it get back to London in time to prevent yeah. the loss of, what, a thousand lives? Uh, yeah, yeah. As, well, it was about uh, 300 or so uh, uh, actually died at Belgrano. Fortunately, of the 1,100 uh, people on the Belgrano, most of them s survived. Right. Um, um, but as, as Diana Gould says it in that how, interview, how many died in the entire war? I think it was I think it was a thousand or so. Right. Okay. Um, uh, as Diana Gould says, there was a fourteen-hour period between the Peru uh, announcing 
or having a peace deal and the decision which Margaret Thatcher made at Chequers to give to authorise right. the, the sinking of the Belgrano right. uh, uh, because of the different time zones. So there, there was a lot of time in which the government had to try and try and deny having any interception. Right. So what is I mean? How does Thatcher uh, respond to that? She was asleep or what? Well, they always respond by saying, "Oh, this is national security. It'll come out in due time," uh, and. Uh, People get confused about the different time zones. But this utter crap story about the Belgrano being uh, going to attack the task force, this has come out again in the, in the, in the modern uh, official history of the Falklands campaign. So, so that's just right Sorry. what you're saying, Nick. So you, what you're saying is the, the British foreign minister had brokered some kind of peace deal that would have prevented the war, and he was, he, he'd phoned London and told, told this, and you think Thatcher probably knew this, he had, he, he, had, he had probably phoned London. Right. Uh, uh, and exactly who has phoned London is difficult to say because, because they the Brits denied, it, denied it all. They're, they're, they're denying, denying that, that, that they yeah. had news of yeah. it, but they probably but, but did have news of it. Obviously, uh, Pym is going to phone London. If he's in London, if he's in Washington with Hague and there's very important negotiations with Argentina and Peru, obviously he's going to tell. So you think Thatcher just said, no, I don't want to know about that peace deal because obviously that she'd committed a whole load of troops that were all there ready yeah ready to yeah ready to let rip and she you think she just went no we've got to have this war now the troops are there sink that belgrano yeah let's she get need, let, let's get it started chaps. she needed that for the terrific jingoistic let's put the grape back into britain stuff on which she got re-elected and you had then had that she became the iron lady after that if you remember yeah and you never seen so many flags fluttering british flags everywhere <laughs> Um, I mean, you can you can see the logic in that. Not, I'm not saying that it's correct, but you can you, you can you can um, understand that kind of mentality whereby, if if she's got to say, okay, lads, no, there's a peace deal. Turn your ships round and come back. Yeah. It what well, it doesn't look. It may very, not. But um, all I'm saying for all your any of your, your viewers who support this, it needed this cowardly act of mass murder, that an old battleship, absolutely no threat to anyone, going home with most of its staff in a cafe or asleep, suddenly getting two torpedoes from a hunter-killer nuclear submarine. Uh, 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 that was so shocking and such a violation of international law that, that uh, Britain has covered up the facts about it ever since and is still covering it up today. All right, so, so you mentioned international law there, Nick. If it's a violation of that, um, why isn't Thatcher in The Hague on trial with this? Well, these things, that, that they never do try any... Uh, and any European leaders, but uh, the, the whole thing was supposedly done under a UN uh, resolution, mm -hmm. Article 51, which involved minimal use of force mm -hmm. and, and trying to get a peace deal. And the minister said, we are not at, at war. This is, a, uh, this is trying to resolve the dispute with minimal force. Right. Uh, and, and that was the principle under which whenever Britain did something, that's why they had to get authorization from Chequers or, or from Northwood. Those are the two British centres of decision making. Just tell us what the title of the book that you co-edited is, Nick. Uh, Our Belgrano inquiry produced this: the unnecessary war as an outcome of the uh, the uh, two-day inquiry we held. And uh, also, I'd like to recommend this little book if you can get hold of it by just, Tam Daliel. Just hold it up a bit higher. By Tam Daliel, Thatcher's Torpedo, which. Uh, is his speeches at the House of Commons. It was a tireless research by Tam Dalio. So he, he was a Labour MP. Is he, yeah. is he still an MP? No, no, he's long re retired. Uh, uh, and he, he opposed the Falklands War, did he? Well, it was through him that, that the story started coming out. For example, initially the government was saying the decision to sink the Bagaran was made privately by the submarine commander. Uh, and, and it was only when the submarine... Uh, the, the Conqueror came back to its base in Scotland, that Tam Daliel, a Scottish MP, was able to find out that they actually did it on instructions from Northwards and probably prior, direct instructions from Thatcher herself. Uh, and uh, Tam Daliel got quite an annoyed at this uh, and uh, started asking questions and finding out the conditions under which it was really sank. Mm -hmm. and, and he came to the conclusion, which I think is fully supportable today, that it was done in order to scupper the peace deal. Now, it, now in the interview that we just watched with uh, Diana Gould and Thatcher, Thatcher says it will come out in 30 years. Yeah. Is that another lie? 
Well, that's the big question. They're supposed to release stuff in 30 years, okay? Uh -huh. uh, and we're we waiting to see if they will. But so when is it? In, th that will be th th this April, May, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, clearly this is a big moment. Uh, and the fear is that because of the geopolitical issues now, of the great pressure which America is, is putting on Britain to negotiate with Argentina, uh, and the total uh, pan-American feeling that, that the British behavior is outrageous, that, that they may feel pressure not to release things. But uh, I urge British citizens to demand the truth on, the, on this matter. We, mm -hmm. we, we're supposed to live in a democracy. We do have a right to know the truth about this issue and, and why it was necessary for Britain to cover up a whole mass of stuff in the first place. Basically, Britain precipitated war. That's the simplest possible way, way of saying things. You may have said it's unfair Argentina's grabbing the island, but a killing war really began over that weekend. Once the Belgrano was sunk, then fierce battle broke out with various British warships being sunk, okay? Uh, and they were sunk in consequence of that Belgrano attack. Mm -hmm. If you just consider the mindset of your average man on the street mm -hmm. who just says, uh, Argentina tried to take over British territory, and we took it back yeah. and we had to kill some people in the process. Yeah. End of story. So if they then read in the newspaper that we are now negotiating or, or considering negotiating, handing those islands back, and there's people who are alive whose, whose sons and daughters or mothers and fathers maybe died in that conflict, they will say, what did my relative die for in that war? This is what they will say, Yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. I can't see how the British government would could come out publicly and say we are now negotiating with Argentina to hand them back. I'm not I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong whether right. sorry not handed back but sovereignty transferred at some point in time or at some, fu or at some future point at some future point in uh, time maybe a hundred years yeah. or something that that they, that become shared for a period and then what have you negotiated. Well, Richard, I, 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 I can't see how any, how your average man on the street would accept that, would accept that our people, well, British people have died and we're now going to even discuss handing them back. Can you see that? Well, we have to learn to live without war in this world. We've got to find other answers than going to war. Uh, and uh, in the long run, having 1,000 people 8,000 miles away from Britain, well, that's quite enormous expense to this country, is just not sustainable. It, it, it's a kind of a absurd situation. Mm -hmm. uh, it involves us spending enormously more on those Argentines, r rather sort of bleak, depressing island, than us spent on ordinary people in this country. I mean, why should they be so privileged to have okay. enormous extra budget, military and sustaining and education yeah. and health? Well, it's, a, it's, it's the British Empire, isn't it? It's, it's a sustaining that what was created well, a the, long time the, ago. Well, the United Nations uh, resolution requested as an end to colonialism that Britain had better uh, negotiate sovereignty on the islands. That's okay. a UN resolution. All right, Nick, I'm going to stop you there, and we're going to we'll, we'll talk more about the basically the the ownership uh, of the islands after this.